parable that despite all that we know about Jesus, all the wonderful songs that we sing and all the proclamations that we make, and all the friends that we have about who Jesus is, there are still so many people around us who, who, who still believe that all religion leads you to a heaven. I mean, they, 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 they still say that um, it does not really matter. I can be a Buddhist, I still go to heaven. I can be a Muslim, I still go to heaven. I can be a non-believer, I still go to heaven, because as long as I I'm good and I don't uh, commit any sin or I don't commit so many sins. You know, it is so easy to, to take a neutral decision in this day and age because we want to be politically correct. We want to be politically neutral. I like us to, to, uh, to see the Lord and, and ask Him to, uh, to direct us and to open our heart even as we come to Him and, and, and hear what He has to say. The Lord gave us years to hear. So therefore there will be no big grass. We just have to listen and hear the understanding. Oh dear Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. There's so many people that you have called in here today, Father God. And to other churches every Sunday. We thank you for this opportunity that you continue to, to fill our hearts and, and to warm our, our, our hearts and to, and, and, and to give us understanding of who you are and that we can be bold enough to go out and tell the whole world who Jesus is and tell the whole world that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Father, we thank you, Father. We ask that you be with us. That you continue with this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we say that it is politically correct. People want to think it is economically advantageous to switch to being a Muslim, to secure contracts, to marry four wives. <laughs> it is so easy to, to, to not to want to belong to any religion because to belong to a religion, to be a Christian, it requires a commitment, a commitment to Jesus. We prefer to follow the middle path. We say that if we must steal, then let us steal on Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday will be good. If we went to lie, let us lie on Saturday. And ask for forgiveness. In Buddhism, they tell you that you follow the middle path. You do, you lie, but do excessively lie. You steal, but don't steal too much. You just earn less merit points. That's all in this life. You earn less merit points. You will make it up next life. You get a thousand five hundred points. See, the is seventy five. Next life, you'll be better off. You work harder. But is that true? Because the Bible tells us that uh, our life is only once, and at the end of the day, we go before the Lord for judgment. The Buddhist scripture tells us that um, it's okay. You got another chance and another life. You be reborn. The next life depends on your action, this life, they say. There is no grace, there is no forgiveness. It's purely merit, there is nobody called Jesus. 
for my Hindu friends. They tell me, through my inquiry, let me to, to discover that uh, it is a religion that, uh, that actually came before Christ. A religion that came before Christ. The mixture of various beliefs from the Aryans and who migrated to India. But the teach, the teach that uh, life is an endless cycle of rebirth. That all living things, including cockroaches and flies, they, they die in one bodily form, but they return in another bodily form. I don't know about you. I don't know whether you're going to be born a fly. <laughs> I don't. I do not want to be reborn and reborn, transmigrating from existence to existence. No beginning and no end, forever and ever. On earth, your Christian brothers have come and gone, your lovers have come and gone, and you're still around, being reborn and reborn and reborn. I guess for those uh, who have not made it this life, they will say, give me another chance to make another million or 2.2 .2 million. <laughs> I don't know about you. I want to go home. I want to go home to agencies. But the love of Jesus is there for me. Well, my Muslim friends, they, they say that um, it's dependent on how you follow what they call the five pillars. Because this is what the Allah requires of them. It's very rule based. It is not relational as we know of our life as Christians. We have a relationship with Jesus. This one is rule based. According to them, you, you must, you must um, recite the creed that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And you must pray five times a day. And when you are driving and it's the time to pray, I mean, you're going to stop the car and, and park the car to face Mecca. You could be on a north south highway and it's going to be difficult to, <laughs> to pray. I mean, so I don't know how you can do that because uh, it would cause so much difficulties to the Ministry of Land Transport. That was three, what's his name again? You might be happy. You pray five times a day, you face mankind and, uh, and you must give money to the poor and you must Fast, you must fast for one month, the month of Ramadan. To me, it's not humanly possible. Because I'm human, I, I mean, there are times when I, I, I just can't fast. There are times when I just can't give to the poor. But uh, according to the, to the Muslim, you're gone. You have not followed all the rules. So what about us then? What about us? Who are we? Corinthians 15, 1, 4, 1 to 4. First Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, 6. The core belief of Christianity. The core belief of Christianity is summarized in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. It says, Jesus died for our sins. Was buried. Was resurrected and thereby offers salvation, salvation to all who will receive him in faith. Now, this is unique among all other faith, unique. Christianity is a unique proposition. We may not realize that. Christianity is more about a relationship than religious practices. Instead of adhering to a list of do's and don'ts, 
the goal of Christian is to cultivate, is to cultivate close walk with God. And that relationship is made possible through the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. The problem with me in my younger days, salvation was not important. As a 15 year old, as an 18 year old, as a 20 year old, as a 22 year old, Salvation was not important. Eternity was not important. It was not important for me to pass my exam. It's more important for me to get good grades and get a job. It's more important for me to get a good job and find a good wives. Thank you, sir. I mean, at that age, I'm not interested in eternity. It doesn't really matter. Who cares about eternity? I care about bread and butter. I was more concerned with the now and what. And understanding who I am and why I am. I've always struggled with myself. I look at you, I look at myself, I'm so different. I hate to, I hate to watch myself on television. So stupid. This man, the whole body moves, you know. I look at Joyce, so nice. <laughs> Two beautiful arms and legs. That's for me, I want to move my arm. My whole body moves. Excuse me. I just squeeze my nose. I can't squeeze my nose, but you do. Now, standing here, I can really do this. I go into his mouth. I can. My ear is really cheap. You see, you can you can actually torture me by putting me into a middle of field. But I can't scratch my ear. I need something to lean on. So for me, in those days, it was not important. Come on, it was not important. I don't understand why. I don't understand why God made me this way. Who is this Jesus? He's so unfair. Huh? You guys run a hundred meters in your life. I run a hundred and ten meters. And not only that, it is a hundred and ten meters hurdle. You know what's a hurdle? You run and every few minutes you jump. And you run and you jump, you run and you jump. I can't do that. It's not fair. It's only really when you become wiser as you grow in your life, you begin to see things in perspective. You begin to see that eternity is important. You begin to see that salvation is important. And so, for many of us, it is this problem. Maybe for, for us who want to bring people to Christ, we need to help them to think of the situation in a wider context and not just the now and the what but the way but the way and the when the way and the when so in those days it doesn't really matter I asked, I asked the Lord Buddha to, 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 to heal me to give me a better pair of hands and a good looking broad shoulder you know what I mean I didn't realize that uh, the Buddha does not heal. The Buddha does not heal. The Buddha is a prince of India. The Buddha is a man. He teaches how to pray Namapasa Bhagavatu Haratu Samasavatasa. Just pray. He can't heal you. But Jesus can. But nobody told me that Jesus can heal at that time. They only told me in my schools and my institution. How do I feel? So Michael's in catechism, they say, Jesus made me. Why does Jesus love me? Jesus made me because he loves me. I don't believe it. But now it's a different ball game. It's different, huh? Because I hope, I hope it is, uh, you, you guys have kind of said a bit earlier than me. I only realized it when I was 40 years old. 
Some people are born clever earlier. Some people are born to be wiser at the age of ripe old age of 40. Praise God. We are all mixed with different, isn't it? Do all religion lead to heaven? No way. We didn't see myself one way. There's only one way, my friend. And there's a way through Jesus Christ. I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Did he say, I will show you the way? No. He said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the way. He did not say, I will show you the way. He did not say, I have the truth. I have the truth. No, he said, I am the truth. I am. And our Lord God said, I am who I am. Remember? I am who I am. I, I, I didn't hear the Muhammad prophet by the Buddhist. I, I mean, I didn't hear them say that. I didn't hear anybody say that except Jesus. He says, I am the way and the truth and the light. And no one comes to the Father. It's very definitive. It's very definitive. No one. No one. You may be born a fly, but you can't fly in there. No one. The Lord did not say, I live in true life. But he said, I am the life. And all of us know that, don't we? In the beginning. What? In the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning. And my friend, through him, through him, all things were made. All things were made. Not some, not most. Not all most. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. You want to know what other people say about Jesus? You heard about Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte, he was the French emperor. I know you said you people said it, Hamtoua. But we said it, Napoleon Bonaparte. During my time. And Bonaparte, Napoleon Bonaparte says, I know man, and I tell you that Jesus Christ is no mere man. Between him and every other person in the world, there is no possible term of comparison. And he cited Alexander the Great, Caesar, Julius Caesar, I come, I see, and I conquer, remember. Charlemagne. And Napoleon said, including myself, he says, We founded empires based upon the force of, based upon force. Based upon force. Jesus Christ founded an empire based on love. Amen? Amen. And Mahama Gandhi, Mahama Gandhi, our great Indian friend. He says that uh, I am a historian. I'm not a believer, he says. I don't know whether he was a Hindu. 
He should be with the Indian. <laughs> Sorry, Chakra. Chakra is a good Christian. Not a God bless you. But he said, I'm a historian, I'm not a believer, he says. But I must confess as a historian that his penniless, that this penniless preacher from Nazareth is irrevocably the very center of history. And Jesus Christ is easily, no sorry, this is, this is HG Wells, and, and, and is easily the most dominant figure in all history. And Muhammad Gandhi said, a man who was completely innocent, offered himself as a sacrifice for the good of others, including his enemies. And he became the ransom of the world, and it was a perfect act. There was a Mount Gandhi, and the earlier one was Ishmael's. There's one senior pastor. He says that fundamentally, our Lord's message was himself. He did not come merely to preach the gospel. He himself is the gospel. Because he himself is the good news. He is the good news. He did not merely come to give bread. No. What did he say? He said, I am the bread. I am the bread. He did not come to shed light. What did he say? He said, I am the light. He did not come to show the door. He said, I am the door. And he did not come merely to name a shepherd. But he said, I am the shepherd. He did not come to point the way. He said, I am the Way, I am the way. I don't know who is Jesus to you. I don't know who is Jesus to you. I don't know who is Jesus to you. Is Jesus your Sunday? Is Jesus your Wednesday? Is Jesus your partner in pain or partner in prayer, in petition? You come to him only when you are in me. Well, Jesus, as we said just now, I am the way and the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father except by me. If any man believes in me, he has eternal life. I stand at the door of the heart and knock. If any man hears my voice, if any man hears my voice, and open the door, and open the door, okay? You can hear the voice, but you don't have to open the door because God gave you the choice. Sometimes it's a problem, isn't it? Huh? Muslim, Islam, they don't give you the choice. Huh? You're born. The moment you're born, you're a Muslim, full stop. Full stop. Whereas Jesus gives you a choice. He says that I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come into him and I will die with him and he with me. Very interestingly, my friend. Verily, verily, verily. I love this. Is that, is that French or is that English? Verily, verily, verily. Or is that Indian? I don't know. I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Jesus contra contrasts himself with false Messiah. False Messiah. There are so many of them before him. And there are so many after him, and there still will be more in the days to come. Watch it, my friend. Watch it. Watch it. They come in many forms. They come in different shapes and sizes. 
they come in different shape and sizes. This false messiah, they will come by this deceitful, deceitful claims and they will seek to steal your ship or to steal the ship or exert control over the people. But he said, I am the door, and by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pastures. Now, here we go, my friend. When he says, I am the door, he excludes everything. He excludes everything. And he, everybody else, the church, the divine institution is not the door. The church is not the door. I am not the door. I may point you to the door, but I am not the door. Good works is not the door. To do good deeds is not the door. The Lord Jesus says, No man come into the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door. Jesus said, I am the door. Did you hear that? He did not say, I was the door. He did not say, I was the door. He did not say, I will be the door. Hey, my friend, just in case you missed the point, it is not D-O-L-L. -L. It is D-O-O-R, please. I am the door. I'm not saying, he's not saying, I will be the door. I am the door. I am the door. He is the door in the present, right now. That is why we are all invited. Come, all you who are weary, come. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. When we go out this afternoon, we tell them, we tell them, now is the time. Da, 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 da. The Lord Jesus, my friend, did not say, I am a door. No! He did not say, I am a door. He said, I am the door. So therefore, by definition, we can very quickly come to that logical conclusion that not all religion lead to heaven, not all religion lead to God. Because he said, I am the door. He did not say, I am a door, and there are many, many doors. I am a door. D O O R. All the doors may lead to a corner pole eh? or the Penang. But all the doors do not lead to heaven. So the Lord Jesus is not one of many doors, but the door. Because he says in Isaiah 45, 22, there is none else. There is none else. Tita other like the other or I am, I am. Hey guys, do we know what a door is? We all know what a door is and what it is for. A door is an entrance. Huh? A door is an entrance. A door is a means of access. So the Lord Jesus says, I am the entrance to salvation. Amen? Amen. Salvation. He's going to make an entrance. I want to sing for a family in Jesus too.
The Lord Jesus is the entrance to salvation, to peace, to eternal life, to divine glory, to heaven and home. He is the only one who will die for our sins. Have you come across any? Did Prophet Muhammad die for their sin? Did the Buddha die for their sin? The Buddha was concerned with his own enlightenment, wasn't he? <coughs> he sat under the tree to find out the meaning of life. And in the end, he was no more because he became the enlightened one. There's nothingness. There's nothingness. It's so scary to be nothingness. Oh. Nothing. He is the only God that died for our sins, that He might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3, 18. 1 Peter 3, 18. He is the only one who died for our sins, that He might bring us to God. It was His precious blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. And he has been the, he has he has been raised from the dead, and is the first fruit of all that the land. So therefore, he alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. I am the door. By me, by me, by me, any man enter in, he shall be saved. I find it amazing. This phrase, by me. Such a simple word, you know, by me. So therefore, we can say it is not by law. It's not by law. It's not by the law. It is not by works. It is not by works. It is by me. Who is me? Jesus. It's by me. It is not by good conduct. It's not by coming up here to speak to you every Sunday. No. It's not, it's not by my birthday gift every birthday, is it? It's by me. Oh dear, it's, uh, this thing is so singularly pointed. It is so singularly important because it tells me that there is no other way. It's just by me, not by works, not by the law. So if any person, any man or woman or girl or boy enters in by me, by me and by Jesus, he shall be saved. So therefore, The door is wide open. The door is wide open. You have an invitation to enter. Because he says, come unto me. My friend, will you enter now? Yes, I will. Yes, I have. It took me 40 years. I was a clever man. I think a lot. I rationalize a lot. I ask myself, what plus one equals to three? Pukele. Okay. So I reason how I rationalize. No. We just require faith. We just require faith. We just require to, to, to accept him. We just require to move in faith. And not by sight, not by logic. All those calculus and integration that you learn, just from the Germans. I thought of more than that, but it's coming to the end, and then just scribbling and wondering why it's coming to an end. So Jesus said, Don't worry, because I'm the way at it. Turn my picture. I look so stupid. Huh? My whole body moves. 
So sometimes I need, I need God's grace to, to reconcile with myself, you know. And through Jesus I can. Because Jesus takes my failure. Jesus takes my failure. And Jesus fills my life with hope. Every, every time I see Lao Tzu Wai, the founder of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Mary Housing, the one that the Kodi Ministry student said, he talks a lot. He goes he a lot about himself, okay? Lao Tzu Wai. But every time I see him, he says, you are so blessed. I said, why? You've got a beautiful wife. <laughs> but never mind, because God is good. And God continues to help you and I to find meaning in His kingdom. This is serious. To find relevance. To find meaning, relevance, and purpose. So often in our life we drift from event to event. From Isaac to Joseph, you know. <laughs> Then you close there. You just move. And we must ask ourselves, what is that purpose? What is that relevance for me in the bigger picture of the Lord's kingdom? I'm 70 years old. In the mirror, I, I said, Oh my God, no, and behold, I look more and more like 70 now. <laughs> I don't want to look like 70. I want to look like 50. But I continue to pray. This is my confession to you. I, I continue to pray that God will continue to grant me and say, Now, relevance. That's what it is. Relevance of God's work. Relevance of God's word. You must ask yourself, are you relevant? And do I am I continuing to be purposeful? You need to be purposeful. And you really need to be focused in the law. Disciples of all nations. Now you go back and tell Bowen, or you go back and tell some of my friends who are not Christian. You go back and tell your friends who are not Christian. Now you know why our pastor and our elders and our friends you know, always want to uh, tell you about Jesus. Because it's the Lord's command. The Lord says, Go, go and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that we should not mix with Christians, we should. We must continue to mix with Matthew, okay? We must continue to mix with Shankara, the pastor. Because we also want to be encouraged, so that we do not get tired of doing good things. We do not get tired of wanting to remain relevant, do you know that it requires effort to want to remain relevant? It's so easy to stop and let drift. It's true. It's true. You must want to say to yourself, I want to continue to remain relevant. I want to continue to remain purposeful. If you do that, you will never walk alone.
So God, the Lord Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And surely, this is the encouragement, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. My dear brothers and sisters, for those who have received evangelism training, and for those who want to, even though you have not, but you want to participate, to go and make disciples in Pakistan this afternoon in Bintan Mall, in Bukhanu, in Kampong Tusan, Tusu. Go in the strength and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, do all religion lead to heaven? No! Do all religion lead to heaven? No! Who leads you to heaven? Jesus. Jesus says, I am the what? I am the way and the truth. The life, the life. You make me cry with joy because we remember. We remember. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And Jesus said, I am the door. I am not a door. I am the door. Enter into his kingdom through our Lord Jesus. You may want to, uh, to uh, step forward for prayer later, or you may want to stand and uh, pass the empty side up and pray for you and myself pray for you. <coughs> and to give strength so that when we go to Bintang more and wherever we are, we will have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Dear Father God in heaven, We thank you. We thank you for this pointed reminder that you are the way, that you are the truth, and you are the light, and that you are the door to our Heavenly Father. We thank you that you continue to give us years to listen and understand. You give us eyes that we can see and have pity and love upon others and that we will reach out and touch others. Father, we thank you for this place that your message can be preached and we ask that you continue to allow that this opportunity of our God and where we have failed, you pick us up. And where we have sinned, you forgive us when we come to you in repentance. And you fill our life with hope. You fill our life with your love. We thank you, Father. Help us continue to want to stay relevant for you. Help us to want to stay relevant and purposeful in your kingdom's work. We stand before you, Father God, we ask that you too, as of now, even now, that you continue to help us to, to do well in what we do for our younger people who are faced with examinations, we ask that you help them to to complete the assignments, we ask them, we ask that you, you help them, you fill them with, with, with discipline and, and with knowledge and with insight that you that will do their work well. And for those who are working, you continue to give them the peace. They will continue to find joy in your workplace and through their workplace be able to minister to their friends, to reach out and touch life and, and make a difference for them. And to share who you are to 
go and make disciples of people around them. And for the older ones, oh, Father God, we pray to continue to give them purpose, to continue to give them life, to continue to give them meaning, to continue to give them hope. And for families, the, the father and the mother will continue to love one another, the husband and wife will love one another, and the children will love one another, and they will love their mom and their dad. And families will be happy that they are families. We commit this church to you too, and all the ministries that you have asked us to, to do, Father God. May you grant us the peace and the joy, even when we are tired to know that the joy of the Lord is our strength, Father. May we will not be tired. We thank you for the beautiful song that we sang in worship to you, priest. May we continue to be one, Father. We continue to, to walk with you, Father. All is with us and pray in Jesus.